Hey friends, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries and in this video we're gonna be building an outdoor sofa. Before I got started building, I asked my mom to find the cushions that she wanted to use with her couch. That way I could build the couch to fit the cushions. What we've got here for the seat is this cushion and it is about five to six inches thick and 23 and a half by 23 and a half. I'm assuming these are 24 inch pillows. The actual size is just slightly under. This will be for the seat and I'll need to build the couch to fit three of these side by side. Then she grabbed these matching cushions for the top. So if I put these like stacked on top of each other, they're about 23 inches tall. I'm gonna make sure that I built the couch to fit the cushions because it's just easier that way than building a couch than trying to find cushions that fit it. Unless you wanna make them, which is a whole nother tutorial. All right, let's get building. I'm gonna be using cedar four by fours and cedar two by fours to build the sofa. Okay, sorry for the long introduction, but I wanted to share a few notes about the build before diving in. If you like the cut list dimensions and building diagrams, I've got the printable building plans for this project linked in the video description. I started by building the sofa side frames. The side frames consist of three pieces of four by four one square front leg, one angled back leg, and a piece that runs between them at the top. The back leg is cut with 20 degree mitered ends, but I accidentally turned the miter the wrong direction for the camera close up and had to swap it back the other way, just in case you're wondering what was going on here. I also cut a two x four seat support to run between the front and back legs to support the seat slats. One end is mitered four degrees and the other end is mitered 24 degrees so that it slopes slightly toward the back. These cedar boards were pretty rough straight from the store so I made sure to sand all the pieces well before assembling. I don't want anyone getting splinters when they sit on this. So I have all my pieces here to make one side of the sofa. I've got this top piece that's gonna connect between the two legs at the top, and then I've got the seat support that's gonna connect between the two legs like halfway down. I'm just gonna use pocket holes on the like inside piece so they'll be hidden. And I'm also gonna use pocket holes on the bottom side of this top four x four. Since this is a four x four, the regular pocket holes won't work. This video is in no way sponsored by Craig, but they sent me this extra large jig a long time ago and I've never opened it obviously because I've never um, needed to use it. But it works with two x fours and four x fours, but two x fours also work with standard size pocket holes. So I usually just use those. However, four by fours do not, so I'm gonna break this out. This is basically just a giant version of the regular size 320. I drilled three and a half inch pocket holes into the ends of the top four by four piece on the bottom side. The extra large pocket hole jig has a setting for three and a half inch material on both the jig and the bit. So make sure that they're both set the same before drilling. Also, don't worry that one end is angled. It'll still work just fine. Then I swapped back to the standard size pocket hole jig and drill bit to drill one and a half inch pocket holes into the ends of the two x four piece. Again, don't worry that these boards are angled, just make sure to drill the pocket holes square to the ends. I used four inch pocket hole screws to attach the top four x four brace between the two legs first. These screws are made with a protective coating for use in treated wood and use outdoors. So these will work fine for exterior grade projects. Then I installed the two x four seat support between them so that it was flush to the inside of the legs. I used the blue coat pocket hole screws here because they're also made with a protective coating for use outdoors. For the back framing, I cut another four x four with one end mitered 20 degrees and the other end square. I laid this out on the inside of the side frame so that the mitered edge was even with the bottom edge of the two x four 
and the front was right at the corner. Then I used four and a half inch timber screws to secure it in place. I was actually afraid that this might be a little wobbly, but it was super sturdy with just two screws. You could use some glue here for extra hold, but the screws alone seem to work pretty well. Once one side of the sofa was built, I built another just like it, only mirrored. One side will be the left and one side will be the right of the sofa. The span of the sofa was too long to run a single two x four without a middle support leg. So I cut a 12 inch long four x four post and attached two equal length two x fours on each side of it so that the overall width was 70 and a half inches. That would make three seat cushions. I secured this at the front of each of the side frames with pocket holes and screws. So basically I'm gonna screw these on here so that I can screw the slats onto the front of it. But I want to place these so that the slats will be flush to the front here. So I'm gonna clamp this as a spacer. Then I can hold this in place to mark where to cut it. These two by twos on the back frame will give me something to secure the back slats to. You can use either pre-cut two by twos for this or just rip a piece of two by four in half. Once I cut these to fit, I install them one and a half inches from the front edge using two and a half inch screws on each side. Don't forget to pre-drill as these two by twos can tend to split pretty easily. Now I could attach the back seat slat and the bottom back slat. I secured the back seat slat with pocket holes and screws between the two by fours on the side frames. Then I secured the bottom back slat to the two by twos with screws. I just used a scrap block to help keep it in position while I drove the screws. You may be wondering why I added these two slats first, but I do have a reason. Having these two pieces in the back corner helps get the middle support in place. Okay, so my camera battery died and while it was charging it, I went ahead and dry fit these pieces together because honestly I didn't know what size they needed to be. So what I've got here is this bottom brace is going to support the middle of the seat slats. This back brace is gonna support the middle of the back slats so that when you lean on it, it doesn't like bow in the middle. Got a little four by four foot in the back here. I beveled this end four degrees because everything's slanting backwards four degrees. So I butted this edge up to this middle brace here and then I clamped it onto the back. And then I butted this on the back there and just marked where to cut it because I didn't know, again, how long I need to make these pieces. In the plans, I'm obviously going to give you the dimensions, but this is how I figured them out. Cut the bottom end 20 degrees, the top is 24 because everything's slanting four degrees backwards. So I marked and cut the four by four leg too. So now I just need to assemble these three pieces together so that I can attach the slats to them and then finish with the slats at the back and the slats on the seat. As I was building this, I didn't know what dimensions to cut these pieces. So I was able to clamp them, mark where they intersected and then cut them to length. Once they were all cut, I could assemble the three pieces together. Of course, in the plans, I provide the dimensions for you so you don't have to figure it out, but it still helps to have these slats in place to clamp it once it's assembled. I used pocket holes and screws to attach the two by fours together, then use screws going a couple different directions to attach it to the four by four post. I do recommend though, using some wood glue here as well. I clamped this support onto the slats and secured it to the center post at the front. This should be one and a half inches down from the top.
Then I made sure it was centered side to side and secured it to the back corner slats. From here, it's super easy. Just add the remaining slats and it's done. I added the back slats first. Added the top one and secured it to the two by twos on the back frame. Then I centered the middle one between the top and the bottom and attached it the same way. Don't forget to secure these to the middle support as well. And lastly, I installed three more seat slats evenly spaced from the front to the back. I installed these using pocket holes and screws to the side frames first. Then I flipped it over and secured the middle to the middle support. If you're worried about pocket hole screws for the seat slats, keep in mind that the weight will be distributed across the four slats between the two sides and over a middle support brace. Unless all the weight was placed on one slat, I wouldn't be too concerned. And at this point, the build itself is complete and all that's left is finishing. Cedar can be left unfinished, but it will quickly turn gray and look weathered if exposed to the sun and rain. I want these to look nice for a long time, so I applied an outdoor stain and sealant to the sofa. To be honest, it was quite difficult to get between all the slats, so it may have been better to stain these pieces before assembling. I may have to consider that when I build the matching chairs. But for now, I did the best that I could, allowed it to dry, then drug it out to the middle of the yard to take some photos. I'm really excited with how this turned out, considering it was such a simple design. I can't wait to deliver it to my parents' back patio. If you want to build one of your own, grab the printable building plans linked in the video description. And if you want to see the matching chairs, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss them when I share them soon. I really hope you enjoyed watching this project come together and I can't wait to see you again next project. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.